Climate change is accelerating in a rapid way and it's driving increased unpredictability in salmon returns. No sockeye, no coho really because we just couldn't see. On the north and central coast of BC, we've seen really wildly variable returns of salmon over the last decade. There have been years of unexpected abundance and there have been years of dismally poor returns. But as it stands currently, we really go into each season with the status quo plan for both recreational, commercial fishing, and we don't have information on how many salmon ever turn till after we've already fished. So this is about building resilience for the future, and it's about making precautionary fishery decisions. I'm tightening up the weir so the fish can't uh, squeeze through here. Just making it fish tight. So a weir is a fence across a river. It was traditionally a harvest technology used by First Nations uh, on the Pacific coast. And we've adapted that tool into a tool for monitoring returning salmon. Weirs like this were banned in the 1860s or 1870s by DFO as a way of consolidating control of the resource in the commercial fisheries hands. That ban has never formally been lifted, but the nations are reasserting their sovereignty and their authority over management and building weirs. In 2013, when we first built the weir, it was built entirely of cedar logs and hand-split cedar pickets that we harvested both off the beach here in Quay and also in a second gross forest that you see behind me. Um, and it was, a, it was a labor of love. And we've been operating this current weir, which is sort of the 2.0 aluminum fancy version since 2019. As fish migrate upstream out of tidewater and into the lower Quay River, they encounter our weir. And they move along it until they find one of two openings, the video boxes. Moving through these boxes, they are recorded on continuous video, which is then analyzed to provide a count of how many fish have migrated upstream of the weir and into the spawning areas of the Quay River. What's really cool about this is that we're using cutting edge AI tools to count fish and identify their species, meaning we can deliver this data in near real time. The number of uses of AI in our society is growing exponentially. And we have yet to see AI really permeate the salmon and the conservation space in a way where conservation practitioners have ready access to these artificial intelligence tools. We count salmon with cameras pretty much everywhere and we spent a lot of time reviewing that data and a lot of money reviewing that data. And if we could have AI helping analyze that, it would really expedite that process and it would give us information in much more rapid succession. I think for the HealthSick and other First Nations partners in this project, the promise is really having data that they own and having the authority that comes with that information. We need information on how many salmon are returning everywhere that we're fishing for salmon. You can't tell me with a straight face uh, that you're having a sustainable fishery if you don't know how many fish you have coming back. And that's a problem right around the Pacific Rim. <laughs>